Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Dunstan's on this fourth Sunday after Trinity. It's also St. Peter's Patronal Festival today, so please keep our friends down at St. Peter's in your thoughts and prayers this morning. We're excited to say that Joe and Jim's charity walk for the Pilgrim's Hospice has now raised well over £1,200, which is amazing. Um, if anybody still wants to give any donations, please leave them at the back. Um, what else? You will notice from the bulletins that during August there are no 8 o'clock communion services on Sundays. This is not going to be a new precedent. It is merely for the month of August because both um, Joe and Brian are going to be taking holidays, well deserved, and our other priests with permission to officiate, our retired clergy, are not available at the moment. Come September it will revert to normal. Next Sunday is a very, very special Sunday because it's the Sunday that we welcome Jenny as our new assistant curate for the benefice. There will be 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock services here and then after the 10 o'clock you're invited to bring a picnic lunch or some nibbles and if it's fine we will gather in the churchyard and have a little party. Drink will be provided. They're going to do the same after the 11 o'clock at St Mildred's the following week. If it's bad weather, it's going to have to be cancelled because we're still not allowed to meet indoors in that sort of number. But please do try and come back for the t after the 10 o'clock if you can and join us so that we can all celebrate Jenny's arrival in the benefice. And that's about it. Thank you very much. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning to St. Dunstan's Canterbury, and good morning to all those who are following this through the live stream. I'm Brian, and today it's the fourth Sunday of Trinity, and my theme today is interruptions, although I don't actually expect a lot of interruptions from you, <laughs> but uh, it arises from today's gospel, as I'll shortly explain. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we sit for the reading of God's word. The first reading is from the Wisdom of Solomon. God did not make death, and he does not delight in death of the living, for he created all things so that they might exist, and generative forces of the world are wholesome, and there is no destructive poison in them, and the dominion of Hades is not on earth, for righteousness is immortal, for God created us for incorruption and made us in the image of his own eternity, but through the devil's envy death entered the world and those who belong to his company experience it this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God the second reading is from the second letter to the Corinthians you excel in everything in faith, in speech in knowledge, in utmost eagerness and in our love for you So, we want you to excel in all this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through, though he was rich, yet for you, your sake, he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice, It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For for if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that they may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who has much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately a hemorrhage stopped. She felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? child is not dead but sleeping and they laughed at him then he put them all outside and took the children's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was he took her by the hand and said to her Talitha come which means little girl get up and immediately the girl got up and began to walk about she was 12 years of age at this they were overcome with amazement Jesus strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of the Lord. May the words of the gospel wipe away our sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please sit down? Well, how should we deal with interruptions in this busy world? In today's Gospel, we learn how Jesus dealt with interruptions. A little girl is dying. Yet Jesus stopped to ask, Who touched my clothes? His disciples thought it was absurd of him to have done so. You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? Jesus might have been content to know that the woman was healed. It took time to respond to her personal touch. Now this interruption offers food for thought for busy people in the 21st century. We're all terribly busy, whether we're in full-time work or retired. We juggle with many commitments, and we do not like it when we get distracted from the task in hand. Now I remember fondly a parish priest many years ago. He was a godly man, but on one occasion, I remember he became very irritated when he heard a parishioner suddenly died, as he threw all his plans for the day out of the window. He was wrong to react like that, but this was a very human failing. The great spiritual teacher, Henry Nouwen, one of my gurus, once remarked, You know, my whole life I've been complaining that my work was constantly interrupted until I discovered that my interruptions were my work. 
Now in Mark's Gospel, the Gospel which we're following this year, Jesus is interrupted repeatedly by Peter when he's at prayer, by a leper when he's preaching in the synagogue, by a paralytic when he's speaking the word, and by a sick woman while on his way to heal a dying girl, as in today's Gospel. The crowd rebukes a beggar whose cry for help interrupts Jesus on his way up to Jerusalem on his critical mission. In all these stories, Jesus' divine authority is placed at the service of desperately needy people. Well, how do we respond to the example of Jesus despite our busy lives? His sensitivity should make us patient and loving and make us prioritize what is profoundly important. Amen. And now we proclaim our faith in the words of the creed. Please step. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate for the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Blessed are you, Creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for peace in a turbulent, troubled world. We pray for Israel, Palestine, Syria, Ethiopia and Eritrea. We pray for all those suffering because of COVID, for those who mourn, for those without the comfort of families, for separated families. We pray for all healthcare staff struggling to cope and desperate for relief and release from the pandemic. We pray for honesty and integrity among those who bear responsibility for the crisis that surrounds us. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you have called us to be one, to live in unity and harmony, and yet we are divided. Race from race, faith from faith, rich from poor, old from young, neighbor from neighbor. O Lord, by whose cross all enmity can be ended, break down the walls that separate us, tear down the fences and walls of indifference and hatred. Forgive us the sins that divide us, free us from pride and self-seeking. Overcome our prejudices and fears. Give us courage to open ourselves to others. By the power of your Spirit, help us to be one. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we pray this morning for our own troubled country and for all those who feel vulnerable, attacked, anxious, or treated with suspicion. We pray for the health and morality of public life and for the Christian values of truthfulness, honesty, humility, and concern for all and their well-being. We pray that our democracy can be strengthened at all levels. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, source of all truth and wisdom, who knows and loves the whole creation, watch over our nation, that truth may prevail over distortion, wisdom triumph, triumph over recklessness, and the concerns of every person be heard. Lord Jesus, who chose the way of the cross in the Garden of Gethsemane, help us to turn our backs on self-interest and support policies that sustain the poor, the vulnerable, and the frightened people of this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And today in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the bishop, clergy, and laity of the diocese of the coast, uh, of coast in the Church of Nigeria. We pray for our churches of St. Dunstan's, especially St. Peter's this morning, and St. Mildred's. We pray for Joe, our rector, and the ministry team. And we pray for everyone here this morning who understands the small gestures that make a church alongside a larger vision, who notices those in need in our services and reaches out to the stranger and needy at the door and in our congregation. We pray that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. And we bring to your loving presence at this time, this morning, the name of someone known to us who suffers. Of someone we love and care for. And of someone we've lost and who we miss. Be blessed, O God, in your doing and your refraining, in your creating and in your sustaining, in your working and in your rest, quiet at the center of movement, joy at the center of pain, peace at the center of strife. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give grace to our families, friends, and neighbors, O loving Lord, and hear us when we remember those who have died in the, faith of, in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Dunstan, Mildred, Peter, Thomas More, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for the intercessions. Please stand for the peace. And in keeping with one of the themes on the biddings of the intercessions, I shall be referring to an introduction which talks of the blessings upon peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. They should be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another a sign of peace and those online, please share their peace with us. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine, a work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray. Look kindly, Lord, upon our worship and praise, that offering may be acceptable to you and cause us to grow in your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us his body and blood. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. Then taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, remember all that Jesus did. 
In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people and gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Dunstan, St. Peter, St. Mildred, St. Thomas More and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us stand for the blessing of Almighty God. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be with you and all those whom you love, the living and the departed, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
That's great. Okay. Um, have a good day.